Hi everybody, um, this is Jess. I just thought I would make a video for everyone to learn the new uh, technique I've discovered for creating digital watercolour paintings. Um, it is a little bit complicated and I felt the easiest way to teach everyone was to make a little instructional video so you could access it whenever you wanted. So I'm going to try and walk you through what I do to create a watercolour painting in Photoshop. Okay, so I've opened up Photoshop CC and the first thing we're going to do is just go up to File, click New, and we're going to make an, a new picture and uh, I'm going to walk you through everything you need here. So we're going to switch this from pixels to inches and I'm just going to make mine 8 inches wide by 8 inches high which was the size I needed for my most recent book I did. Um, we're going to have the resolution be at 300 pixels per inch. Make sure it's not below that otherwise when you if you needed to increase the size of the art you would get a very blurry, fuzzy picture. 300 is a good size. Um, and then your color mode, you do not want it to be RGB. RGB is for screen artwork. Um, so whenever you're looking at a computer, your phone, tablet, that's when you need RGB color. But for printing, which is mostly what we do, um, we do CMYK. Okay, and then your background here should be white. As we're doing a watercolour painting, we are really going to be mimicking um, the traditional watercolour process. So you would start with a white piece of paper. Okay, and then so we've got 8x8, 300, CMYK, and a white background. Press OK. And there it is. Now, the first thing you're going to do is, right here you see you've got your background down here in the right hand corner. The first thing we're going to do is create a new group. <clears throat> so to do that, you're going to click right here. That's this little symbol here. And if you hover over it, it says create a new group. So whenever you get lost and I'm asking you to click on things, hold your mouse over the symbol and just see what it says. So this one is create a new group. Now with your new group, you're going to make a mask for that group. And the mask is this symbol right here. It's a rectangle with a colored in circle in the middle. And that is a layer mask. So you're just going to click that too. As you can see right here, it just added a layer mask to your group. And it's going to be called group one. Now, I want you to click this box this is your layer mask, just click it. Just It's already selected, but just make sure it is by clicking it. Now, we're going to go to Edit up here, and down to Fill. Okay, now, in Contents, I want you to find Pattern. Click on Pattern, and then you're going to see underneath it says Custom Pattern. And these are all the patterns that they come with in Photoshop. This is what is going to add, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, texture um, for your watercolor paper. So this is basically like um, finding a watercolor paper you like. The one I use is uh, Gauche Light on Watercolor. It's the second one from the end. Gauche Light on Watercolor. So you click that. Everything else stays the same. And press OK. Now if you look over here, it's turned that box grey. Now it's got um, a texture to it, though you can't see it. You will be able to see it when we start applying colour. So what I want you to do is, I want you to actually change the levels a bit on this mask. So you can go to the levels, or um, for, for Mac users, just go Command L. And these are your levels. So Keep an eye on this box down here in the right. We're going to slide the white over. We're sliding it down. If you can see, the 
that box is getting lighter. So you can adjust it like that. We want it to be lighter, whiter. Okay, and then press OK. Perfect. Okay, so now you've got that, we're going to create our first layer and it's going to be inside the group. So come down here and you see this here, this is your layer. And it says layer one. We're going to double click on that and we're going to rename it watercolor. Now, to make this a watercolor painting, you with watercolor you do lots of layers and you want to be able to blend your colors. So you're going to go up here to the um, normal and you're going to change it to multiply. That's what's really going to give us a nice watercolor effect. So this layer that you've just named watercolor is where you're going to do all of your coloring. So I want you to imagine that this is um, where you're going to get your color out. This is where you're going to use all your watercolor paints. Now uh, we're going to do one more layer for our drawing. I want you to click on background and then I'm going to just reopen a drawing that I already did. So you can actually use drawings that you've done by hand yourself and scan them in and then uh, just save them and open them. So I'm going to open recent and I just have this really cute little drawing of Bud in a bucket. Um, so we're going to use this, this is just hand drawn, not done on a computer. I'm going to select it all by pressing command A and then I'm going to copy it by pressing command C. Now Go back to our original picture and you should have clicked on background. All you're going to do is press command V which pastes your drawing onto the page. Okay and I like to change this layer also from normal to multiply. Okay now obviously this does not fill the page so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. To do that I'm going to just press command T which will help you change the size. Now, you want to keep the proportions correct, so you have to hold down the shift key so that you can resize your image without distorting it. So hold down the shift key and then just click at the bottom and drag it. And drag until you get it about the size that you want. You move it around and then just press enter so that it knows that's the size you want. <clears throat> now, if you notice, you can see a lot of the texture that was on the original paper that I drew this on. Now, this is fine, but you don't want to see this difference between your white paper on your computer and the mottling effect of a real paper. So, what I do is make sure you clicked on that layer and just press Command L again for your levels. And you're just again going to drag the white, oops, not much, just a little bit. So you can see it just makes that background just disappear. So you, I'm literally only doing it just a tiny bit. Perfect. And you can always come back and change that if you need to. Press OK. OK, and I'm going to rename this layer Drawing. OK, so this is really emulating. I, a traditional watercolor painting. You've got your drawing on one layer and above it is your watercolor which is going to be where you do your painting. Okay so now we're going to start by actually getting some color on the paper. Now I have downloaded a special brush for that and I use this brush and only this brush for everything. I don't switch between brushes anymore. I just use one brush and I can give you a link to the brushes that I use and the special blending tool I'm going to show you um, as well. But uh, to save time, I'll just show you what I what I've been doing with the downloaded tools I have. <clears throat> so you're going to click on paintbrush right here. This is where you can change the size of your brush. You, if you need to do very delicate work, you can go very low. If you need to do a lot of 
big spaces, you can go high. So I'm going to go about, about here, okay, 75. Keep the opacity at 100%, flow 100%. The only time you're ever going to change anything is when you change your brush size, okay? Now, um, we're going to choose a color. Down here, choose a color. For bud and all the bunnies, I usually go for something around here, sort of a brownish look, and I go right up to the top. Okay. And I'm using my Wacom tablet to do this. So now all you're going to do is literally paint on top. You can actually go over the top of the pencil and it will still show through. I'm going to do this really roughly just to show you how you can do this. Okay. And I like to leave a little bit of white in a few areas because that gives it more of a real feel. Now, that's my first color I did. You always start with the lightest and get darker. I'm going to just go a little bit darker now. And then you're going to lay on top of it. And one thing I will say is before you start painting, you want to determine where your light source is. So for me, the light's going to be coming from over here, which is why I've left a little lighter area here. Now I'm going to go a bit darker. And it doesn't matter if it looks kind of rough, and I will show you why in just a moment. Okay. Bud. Now I'm going to do a bit of a bucket, so I think we'll go. Grey is an amazing colour because you can do so many different greys if you want a different colour here on the spectrum. I'm just going to do the greenish kind of grey, start light. See I came right the way over here, that's how you get your grey. Lightest grey to start with, and just go all over. <laughs> And we'll go for another darker grey. And you're literally going to do all your colour on one layer. And you can do different layers, but it, it really doesn't make a difference. It's not going to um, help you in any way because you won't be able to completely cover up as each, this is literally like real watercolour. If you do another layer on top of this, you're not going to completely cover up the layer underneath it. It's just like doing a wash. Okay, go for a different grey. So I can fill this in. So yeah, you have an idea. This is not perfect, it's just to give you an example. Okay. And we'll do a bit of a shadow perhaps down here. Okay. <clears throat> and the lovely thing about this technique is the blending. So I'm going to put in a bit of pink a bud, give him, give his cheeks and his little nose a bit of pink. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now, I've got my colour on here, is I'm going to blend it. And you're going to use a special tool. Come over here to this sign which looks like some tools, because that's what you're going to use. And I will show you where you can download this. But it is a special tool which is great for blending. called blend fast. As you can see up here it's at 40. You want to just look, hover over and see how big the circle is. 
might make it a little bit bigger. So I put it up to 51. And you're just going to blend. And as you can see, let me get a bit closer. It just smudges and blends a little bit for you. So that if you can imagine this was wet watercolour paint, it would all blend into each other. And sometimes it's nice to leave sharp edges because you do do that in watercolour. Watercolour is the most unforgiving medium. So you don't want to take away from that because then it makes it feel more authentic. But it is fun to blend. You can get carried away with it. And it's really nice just for blending two colours into each other. And as you can see now, it just really looks like you've really just done a watercolour painting. It's really fun. Okay. That was a quick blend. Now, I'm just going to show you the last thing I do is I did the watercolour. Now, as I'm an illustrator, I love to outline my work. So what I do is I come in, get nice and close. And then I go back to my paintbrush and I put it on about four. Actually this one, for this size picture I'm going to need to do it a bit bigger. I put it on seven. I'm just going to see how that looks. I'm still on the same layer. That's a bit dark. So we've got to get lighter. And I just like to go over some of the pencil marks I've done. Okay. And with this, the more you go on top of your work, the darker it gets. This is just very rough. This is not perfect by any means. But it's just to give you an idea of how you can do it. And then, if it's looking too dark you can go back in with your blend brush and I would suggest that you make it smaller and you can just blend it a little bit see how that suddenly makes it look a bit more natural even just blending the edges And then you would just keep going over the whole picture. Drawing, blending, blending, drawing. And that, in a nutshell, is how you create a watercolour painting using your computer, Photoshop CC. So if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you enjoyed my little video and hope it answered some of your questions. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.